Rate limiting is a technique for limiting the number of requests that can be made to a web API in a given period of time. Rate limiting can help improve performance of an application in a lot of cases. But the main reason why a lot of people use rate limiting is during monetizing API. For monetizing an API, rate limit is very important because if you charge your client based on the number of requests made, you want to make sure that beyond that number of requests, you apply rate limiting. .NET 7 provide rate limiting feature through the rate limiting middleware out of the box. And it is part of system.threading.ratelimiting namespace. Now to add rate limiting to a particular application, we are going to first add the using of system.threading.ratelimiting and I'm adding it part of the program class. And this is where we are going to add the rate limiting into the dependency injection middleware. Then we are going to add the rate limiting middleware. But before we add any rate limiting, I'm just going to run this application to show that if we don't have any rate limiting, we're going to have a default behavior, meaning there is no limitation on how many times an API can be called. We can call it as many times as you want, and there is no limit here. So what I'm going to do is for the same API, I'm going to apply a rate limit of maximum of five requests within a 10 second window. So to do that, what I'm going to do is first, as I mentioned, I'm going to register the rate limiting to the dependency injection container. And for that, we can use builder.services. And here we can add add rate limiter. And you can see the add rate limiter extension method takes an action and the action is of type rate limiter option. And rate limiter option is the object that we are going to use to set all the rate limiting criteria. So for that, I can do options. And this is where we are going to set up all the options. Now here, the first thing that we are going to do is if I use the options to a dot, we can see some of the properties here. The first one is on rejected. It is a func which can be used for handle rejected request by the middleware. This is something we can discuss in future. Rejection status code is a property which we can use to set the default status code of the rejection request. Now by default, its value is 503. And initially we're not going to set anything. And then we are going to set it to show we can change it to what we want it to be. The next important properties that we have is the global rate limiter. So global rate limiter sets the global partition rate limiter that will be applied to all requests. The global rate limiter will be executed fast, followed by endpoint specific rate limiter if it exists. Now for today's video, I'm just going to focus on global rate limiter. And also for global rate limiter, I'm going to focus off only one strategy of rate limiting. There are in total four rate limiting strategies. They are concurrency limit, fixed window limit, sliding window limit, and token bucket limit. Today, we are just going to focus on fixed window limit because that is probably one of the most popular or one of the rate limit strategy which will be most useful. So first we'll start with setting the global rate limiter. And here we can do is equal to, and as you can see, it is of type partition rate limiter. So we'll start with uh, partition rate limiter. And this is a static class which has a create method. And the create method creates a partition rate limiter. So we can use the create method. And create method, as you can see, it can take up to two types. 
and the first one is a resource t resource which is the resource type that is being rate limited in our case we are trying to limit the rate of the http request so we can use here http context as the first type and for the second type is the partition key or t partition key this is the type to distinguish partitions with so partition is whenever we implement a rate limit it will be limited within a partition so what is the partition key that we are going to use the type of the partition key here we are going to use string because for our example we are just going to use http host header as the partition key given we don't have any authentication otherwise we could have used something like the user and we could have partition based on user if we want we can add partition based on api key also if it is part of the http request header and there are other things we can use as well but for this example i'm just going to use an http request header and then as you can see it takes a delegate which provides http context as the input and rate limit partition object of type string as the output for the function so here we can do context and for the context you don't need this and from the context what we can do is we can do rate rate limit partition and dot we're going to use the static method and you can see here we have the option of either returning concurrency limiter fixed window limiter sliding window limiter or token bucket limiter for today's video i'm just going to focus on fixed window limiter so we are going to use fixed window limiter and for fixed window limiter we have two parameter first one is the partition key so partition key as i mentioned we are going to use the http host so we can use context dot request dot headers dot host dot to string that will be our partition key and then for the factory which is nothing but another delegate which takes type key and fixed window rate limiter option so we can say factory is given it gives a partition as a input parameter and here we can say new fixed window rate limiter options and for the fixed window rate limiter option we have four properties we can set first one is auto replacement which is a boolean property which specified whether the fixed window rate limiter is automatically refresh counter or someone else is going to call the try replenish to refresh the counter for us we're just going to keep it true so that it automatically does this for us the second one which is the most important one is permit limit permit limit is the maximum number of permit counters that can be allowed in a window meaning maximum number of requests that can be allowed so here as i mentioned earlier we are going to set five and then we can use something called as queue limit now queue limit is very interesting queue limit is essentially used for queuing the request instead of rejecting them so after the number of permitted request has reached its limit if you do not want immediately to throw a rate limit error you can queue those requests but for us we are just going to set it as zero we don't want to queue it and queue processing order is the order in which the queue is processed now for us it is not useful but i'm just going to show you the available values one is newest first one is oldest first so you can either use oldest first so the oldest item from the queue will be processed first or newest first which is newest item from the queue will be processed first but we are not going to use it but if you have to use it in my opinion oldest first is a better option and the last one is the window which is the time window that takes in the request 
and as I mentioned for us, I'm just going to give a time span dot from seconds of 10. So I'm saying that within 10 seconds of the window, I'm just going to allow five requests to come in. And that's about it. I can just give a semicolon here. Now my rate limiter is added to the dependency injection container. Next thing I'll do is here, I'm going to do app dot use rate limiter. So now the rate limiter middleware is added here. At this point in time, if I now run this application and I try out the exact same request that I tried before, which did not have any rate limit. Now, after it's tried five times within the 10 second, I'm going to start getting error. You can see I'm getting error and the error is 503. Now 503 is not a good error because it does not tell that it is a rate limited error. So to set the rate limit error type in the response, what we can do is, and now see we are getting the response back again because it passed the 10 second window. But after five requests again, it will start throwing the 503. Now let's go back and return appropriate error. And as I mentioned for appropriate error, we can use options dot rejection status code. And for this one, I can do status code dot 429, which is too many requests. This is what we should be returning, telling the user that it has reached the limit of number of allowed requests. So now if I run this application and try the same thing, I'd be seeing a 429 after the number of requests reached its limit. So I'm going to try it. And now you can see, we see the response status code of 429 instead of 503 as before. So this is all I wanted to cover for today's video. In the next video, I'm going to cover the other types of rate limiter as well as some other features that we can use for rate limiting. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and you think you are getting value out of my channel, subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.